I wanted tonight um, to not just be a, a time where we go into groups to pray, but also remembering to rejoice. I think there are a couple of indicators in the passage that even as we go to God with our requests, that we go to him rejoicing and um, we go to him with thanksgiving. Uh, which I think that thanksgiving is a kind of forward-looking anticipation and trusting God to give us exactly what we need and when we need it. And so it's, it's a thanksgiving by faith. It's not necessarily that you see how your circumstance is working out, but you know that you're serving the God who will work out your circumstances. Um, and so you can pray to him and request, um, make your request known to him, all the while already giving thanks. Uh, so yeah, those, those two things stick out to me as I read the passage for us tonight, tonight um, is to rejoice in, in all circumstances and always, um, and to pray with thanksgiving when we let our requests be made known to God. And I was thinking about kind of piggybacking off of that word, you know, praying with thanksgiving and trusting that God already has a plan to provide for the things that we're asking him for um, and all the things that we need. And it uh, reminded me of uh, the Israelites in the wilderness and how they sort of complained to God about not having food. Um, and they were complaining about, oh, Moses, have you brought us out here to you know starve and die? We should have stayed back in Egypt where we had food to eat. Um, and, and God did this thing for the Israelites where he provided them what was called manna every day. Um, but it was a little, it's, it's got some, the story has some interesting like details to it. So I wanted to read it um, for us and then make a couple of notes. So this is now in, in Exodus 16. It's a little bit of a longer passage. So I'm kind of going to go and just start in on it and read it and maybe just let your posture be one of listening for how God would be speaking to you in your situation today or situation of somebody that's on your heart um, or for the well in general and pray that God would kind of make his word alive to us um, that his word is kind of like food, you know, in the same way that we've been talking a lot about food, about the Thai food that Grant, Senya, Melissa, and Tasha are eating, um, and my Chipotle. And so um, we're going to be talking about the food that God provided the Israelites in the wilderness, and God's word is our food as well. So I really pray that tonight um, he would feed us with his word through this passage. So Exodus 16. They set out from Elam, and all the congregation of the people of Israel came to the wilderness of Sin, interesting name, which is between Elam and Sinai, on the 15th day of the second month after they had departed from the land of Egypt. And the whole congregation of the people of Israel grumbled against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. And the people of Israel said to them, Would that we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the meat pots and ate bread to the full. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Verse 4, Then the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I am about to, to rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a day's portion every day, that I may test them whether they will walk in my law or not. On the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather daily. So Moses and Aaron said to all the people of Israel, At evening you shall know that it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt. And in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your grumbling against the Lord. For what are we that you grumble against us? And Moses said, When the Lord gives you in the evening meat to eat, and in the morning bread to the full, because the Lord has heard your grumbling, that you grumble against him, what are we? Your grumbling is not against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say the whole congregation of the people of Israel, Come near before the Lord, for he has heard your grumbling. And as soon as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the people of Israel, they looked toward the wilderness, and behold, the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. And the Lord said to Moses, 
I have heard the grumbling of the people of Israel say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall be filled with bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening, this is verse 13, in the evening quail came up and covered the camp, and in the morning dew lay around the camp. And when the dew had gone up, there was on the face of the wilderness a fine flake-like thing, fine as frost on the ground. When the people of Israel saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they didn't, did not know what it was. And Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. This is what the Lord has commanded. Gather of it, each one of you, as much as he can eat. You shall each take an omer according to the number of the persons that each of you has in his tent. And the people of Israel did so. They gathered some more, some less. But when they measured it with an omer, whoever gathered much had nothing left over, and whoever gathered little had no lack. Each of them gathered as much as he could eat. And Moses said to them, let no one leave any of it over till the morning. But they didn't listen to Moses. Some left part of it till the morning, and it bred worms and stank. And Moses was angry with them. Morning by morning, they gathered it, each as much as he could eat, but when the sun grew hot, it melted. On the sixth day, they gathered twice as much bread, two omers each. And when all the leaders of the congregation came and told Moses, he said to them, this is what the Lord has commanded. Tomorrow is a day of solemn rest, a holy Sabbath to the Lord. Bake what you will break, bake and boil what you will boil. And all that is left over lay aside to be kept till the morning. So they lay, laid it aside till the morning as Moses commanded them. And it did not stink, and there were no worms in it. Moses said, Eat it today, for today is a Sabbath to the Lord. Today you will not find it in the field. Six days shall you gather it, but on the seventh day, which is a Sabbath, there will be none. On the seventh day, some of the people went out to gather, but they found none. This is verse 28. And the Lord said to Moses, How long will you refuse to keep my commandments and my laws? See, the Lord has given you the Sabbath. Therefore, on the sixth day, he gives you bread for two days. Remain each of you in his place. Let no one go out of his place on the seventh day. So the people rested on the seventh day. Now the house of Israel called its name manna. It was like coriander seed white, and the taste of it was like wafers made with honey. Moses said, this is what the Lord has commanded. Let an omer of it be kept throughout your generation so that they may see the bread with which I fed you in the wilderness when I brought you out of the land of Egypt. And Moses said to Aaron, take a jar and put an omer of manna, manna in it, and place it before the Lord to be kept throughout your generations. As the Lord commanded Moses, so Aaron placed it before the testimony to be kept. The people of Israel ate the manna forty years till they came to a habitable land. They ate the manna till they came to the border of the land of Canaan. Um, there you go. That is Exodus 16. Um, yeah, so some of the things that stuck out to me as I read it. Uh, one of them is sort of Israel's constant complaining and lack of obedience um, to what God is instructing them. And in the first place, Israel's lack of faith in God, believing that the same God that brought them out of Egypt would also provide for them in the wilderness. So they're sort of like short-sighted and forgetful and we can be that way too, for sure. Um, so almost like related to that, toward the end of the passage, God is telling Israel to keep some of the manna um, as a way of remembering how God provided for them in the wilderness. So God wants us to remember how he provided for us in the past. And he wants us to keep that in heart and to trust that in the future, he's going to continue providing for us. So I think this passage really displays God's faithfulness and his care for his people, and at the same time, Israel's disobedience. Um, going along with that, um, one of the interesting things that I love about this passage is, uh, this is sort of verses four through eight, and how the people are grumbling to, to Moses and Aaron, but Moses and Aaron are like, what are we that you grumble against us? And then Moses says, your grumbling is not against us, but against the Lord. And that's something I've thought a lot about um, because maybe sometimes we think that we are complaining um, to the source of our issue. But, um, but oftentimes I think, and maybe almost all complaining is against God. 
because God is sovereign and God is in control. And he and, and so their complaining is not really against Moses and Aaron, who are really God's mouthpieces. Their complaining is against God. So um, I think uh, when Paul ta talks to us about doing everything without complaining or arguing, um, it's something that we should really consider that how is it that our complaining is um, really our complaining against God? Um, so that, that was something I was taking away from those verses four through eight. Um, and again, God is just very patient and merciful with his people. He like responds to their complaining. Um, even though a stubborn parent might want to like teach Israel a lesson and just like refuse what they're complaining for. Um, but that's not what God does. And so he institutes this way of feeding Israel in the wilderness, which was described as not habitable. Um, so it's a miracle that for, for those 40 years, Israel had food to eat every day. Um, what is really profound to me in this passage is that the food that God provides Israel is given to Israel morning by morning. Um, that that there was no like um, hoarding of the food or putting it in storehouses so that they would have food for the next week or month or years, um, but that Israel had to trust that in the next day, God was going to provide them food for that day. Um, and, and so kind of going back to that Philippians passage about presenting our request to God with thanksgiving um, and that thanksgiving being a faith that trust that God is going to provide for us exactly what we need and when we need it. Um, God has a way of providing for us what we need today. <laughs> and for some reason, we have a really hard time with that. Uh, we want security and we want to know that our tomorrow is going to work out. We want to look around at our resources and see that we have enough for tomorrow. But oftentimes, that's not how God operates. Um, and so Jesus talks about um, not worrying about tomorrow because it has its own troubles. Um, Lamentations talks about uh, how God's mercies are new every morning. And I think uh, this passage is really a picture of God's mercies to, to the people of Israel and how it was um, this bread coming from heaven every morning, new every morning. Um, so that's something I wanted for us to meditate on tonight, which is that God provides for us um, new every morning. And um, yeah, and, and so I guess for, for our hearts that have a hard time trusting God, it's choosing to rejoice and to believe and to be thankful, even when we look at tomorrow and don't know how we have the strength for it or the resources for it, um, to not get um, caught up in anxiousness, but to be able to present our requests and the needs that we see, present those with God to God, knowing that um, he has a way of providing for us um, every day. Uh, the, next, the next thing that uh, the passage really hones in on is the Sabbath day. And it's another topic that I've been reflecting on a lot um, because I, I think we, we tend to understand Sabbath as maybe with less religiosity as the Jews did, uh, but also as kind of maybe basically meaning, well, it means rest, like literally. Um, but sometimes we think of it as like, oh, Sabbath is a break, you know? Sabbath is I worked six days and now, you know, now I get a day where I'm just going to chill out. Um, I think God's bar for the Sabbath day is actually a little bit higher than that um, because he wants us to keep it holy. And anyway, so I, I, I'm kind of in this long season of wondering what it means to keep the Sabbath holy um, rather than it just merely being a day that we take a break. Um, and, and so anytime the, the Old Testament talks about the Sabbath like it does in this passage, it like piques my interest because I'm like, okay, 
there's something I don't quite get yet about the Sabbath. So what does this passage say about it? And God is very, maybe, maybe the word is like jealous that his people would keep the Sabbath. Um, and so he gets, is it, um, yeah, he, when he speaks to, to Moses saying, how long will you refuse to keep my commandments and my laws? Um, and so he institutes this way for the people not to go out and gather on the Sabbath. On every other day, it says that the food kind of goes bad after that one day, but the Sabbath day is an exception. So God like manipulates the environment to test the Israelites about the Sabbath and to provide them a way to, to have their Sabbath. Um, and I wonder like how that parallels with us, us today, like in the same way that God um, manipulated the circumstances of the Israelites such that they could take a Sabbath. Um, how does he do that for us too? I think God knows the rest that we need. And um, we can, sometimes we can try and say like when we're not taking a Sabbath um, or dedicating a day to God and to rest in him. Sometimes we can say that, oh, like I've just been so busy I haven't been able to take a Sabbath. And maybe that's true, but I also wonder um, whether God is providing a way for us to take a Sabbath and we refuse it. Um, maybe because we hold on to our anxiousness and we think we need to continue working even when we don't. Um, yeah, so maybe like an awareness of how how is God providing a way in my circumstances to give me the rest that I need? Um, I love studying the stories of Jesus and, and how he leads his disciples in a way where he knows the rest that they need and he'll call them away to desolate places to take their rest. Um, but it's very clear when you read the Gospels that the rest that the disciples are getting is mediated by Jesus, that he's the one uh, managing their rest. Um, so I love that. I love that about God, that he knows what we need um, before we ask, including the rest that we need. And so I know, I'm sure others others of you have had this thought for the season for the well, but I wonder if God is giving us rest. Um, and yeah, maybe we were really amped up to, to end this year with a bang, with a couple of amazing events. And, they would have gone really well, I'm sure. But I think um, I was also hearing a couple of things about how people, uh, even Abel sharing today about, about getting kind of some unique rest in a pretty busy season. So I, I love that God is using our circumstances to give us a break. Uh, and, and I would want us to see it as coming from him um, rather than like just a, I don't know, like, Oh, lucky me, you know, I don't have to you know, do the things that I thought I was going to need to do, but rather that this is a gift from God that he gives his beloved sleep. And so we receive it from him. Um, yeah, so I, I think that kind of concludes for the most part, my thoughts about Exodus 16. And um, so I, I wanted to kind of juxtapose those two passages, Exodus 16 and Philippians 4. Um, I'm sure many of you have heard that passage in Philippians 4 about, about how God gives us this peace that transcends or surpasses understanding. Um, yeah, and so I, I, I think even though we hear that passage a lot, I hope that it doesn't grow old on us, but that it's new every morning, just as we see that God provides for us newly every morning. So we're going to go from here and break up into groups and pray. Um, I'm eager for that because, yeah, I think there are, there are needs in the group and surrounding the group that need prayer. Um, and there's a promise from God that when we do that, he gives us his peace, knowing that he's near, and he's in control, that he's got a plan, and he cares for us, that he's for us. Um, so I, I hope that reading those couple of passages was helpful for us to just like have some of those things about God in mind as we go to pray. 
um, to do it with um, with joy in our hearts, with rejoicing, um, to do it remembering the ways that he's provided for the for us in the past, and he's going to continue providing for us, um, and and to pray with thanksgiving. Um, so with that, let's go into groups. I have, didn't totally think about how I wanted to organize the groups, but I know there's at least, it looks like the house broke up. So <laughs> there was one um, account that was on that was, that had maybe four people on it. So yeah, if we could break up into, um, I'm just looking at the numbers right now, there's 11, 12 on the page. Maybe if we did groups of four, um, three might be nice too, actually. Groups of three. I think that would help us give each other a little bit more attention. Sounds good. Thanks, Jeremy. I'll, I'll create that right now. Cool. And I could uh, pray for us as you're doing that. So God, thank you. Thank you for your word. Uh, thank you for feeding us with it. And um, thank you that you are a merciful God that... Um, that provided for the Israelites, even when they grumbled against you, uh, that you provided for them to their shame. Um, so I pray that you would soften our hearts, God, and uh, give us hearts of obedience and um, hearts that don't forget how you've provided for us in the past, hearts that um, rejoice and uh, are thankful for what you are going to do uh, as we pray to you, God. So pray that you would just bless abundantly um, the groups as we as we break up to pray um, give us your spirit and discernment um, about how to pray for one another how to care for one another and um, how to worship you in the midst of all that so we give you all the glory god in jesus name amen